Chapter 8 Captain Ritless Running as fast as his legs could carry him, TG dashed after Sky. Just before he reached the dinghy, he ran out of energy and had to stop. Bending over to catch his breath, he heard a loud voice drifting towards him on the breeze. Shiver me timbers! Shiver me timbers! He looked up, but no one else was around. Staggering up to Sky, he panted, Did you hear that? Shiver me timbers! Shiver me timbers! The voice repeated, followed by an ear-piercing squawk and a flutter of wings. TG felt a sharp pinch on his shoulder and the feathery brush of wings on his face. Twisting his neck around, he found himself staring into small, two small black beady eyes. They belonged to a brightly coloured blue parrot and draped around its neck on a silver chain was a golden key. TG held out his arm and the bird obediently hopped down onto his wrist. Gently, he lifted the key over the parrot's head. It was about 10 centimetres long with a large carved D at its head. With a powerful flap of its wings, the parrot flew off squawking, follow me, follow me. As he put the chain over his head, TG re raced after the bird, yelling excitedly, it's the key to the treasure, I'm sure. I bet D stands for Davy in the clue. Come on, let's follow the parrot. It'll lead us to it. Still squawking, follow me, follow me. The parrot flew straight to the dinghy, seized hold of a length of rope on the boat and flew over to TG, dropping it at his feet. TG grabbed the rope and pulled the little dinghy towards him. Winking up at him from the bottom of it was another clue. He jumped in excitedly, picking up the faded piece of paper. The warriors followed him into the boat, gathering around to hear, t to hear the clue. TG hurriedly read aloud. The final clue can be found board my ship. So come along, matey, for a magical trip. Signed, D. It's from Davy. Look, he signed it, D. We're going on board his ship. Where is it? Can you see it? I think it's there, said Scarlet, pointing out to sea. Smack bang in the middle of the bay was anchored the most magnificent ship. It was painted bright blue with giant white sails. At its bow was the strangest figurehead TG had ever seen. A giant carving of what looked like a salt cellar. But it couldn't be, could it? That must be Davis' ship. Isn't she wonderful, exclaimed TG. It's got D for Davy on the flag at the top. I can't wait to get on board and explore. It's just like the ship Sir Francis Drake sailed in the Armada. The dinghy started moving all by itself. Strangely, TG had the feeling that it knew where it was going. It pulled up alongside the big ship next to a rope ladder. The parrot flew up on the ship calling, follow me, follow me. They all scrambled up the ladder onto the deck. Avast there, TG my lad. TG turned to see a man walking barefoot along the deck towards him. Out of his weather-beaten face twinkled a pair of steely grey eyes. And round his head was tied a blue triangle of cloth and his silver-grey hair was pulled back in a ponytail. He was wearing a blue and white striped t-shirt and baggy grey breeches, ending abruptly at his calf and held up by an enormous black belt with an ornate silver buckle. My name's Davy. Welcome to my ship. Come and talk with an old sea salt for a while. Then you can go hunting treasure. Shiver me timbers. It's the Rainbow Warriors. Yo ho, me hardies. Yo ho, muttered the warriors, but they didn't seem very happy. TG didn't notice that the warriors didn't look too keen on coming over. He was too captivated by the exciting tales Davy was recounting about his life at sea. After a while, Davy stopped his storytelling. Well, me lad, that's enough for now. I expect you'd like to get on with the treasure hunt. Oh, yes, please. I was so excited when I found the map. Following the clues is fun. I'll make it a bit easier for you. Take a look in me cabin. I think you'll find it very interesting. 
can I? I've always wanted to see inside a real sailing ship. Aye, and take as long as you like. I'll be off now, shipmates. The rigging needs some attention. Just behind TG, the door to the captain's cabin was slightly ajar. He opened it and stepped down the few rickety steps. Hanging around the walls were cutlasses and various pistols. In the centre of the worn but highly polished oak table was a small silver chest. It was beautifully engraved around its sides with galleons in full sail and on the lid the letters DR. A treasure chest! TG carefully pulled it towards him. It was quite heavy. He took the key from around his neck and with trembling hands placed it in the lock. It was a bit stiff at first, but then it clicked round. What might be inside? It didn't feel like coins as the box didn't jingle when he moved it. It sounded more like stones. That must be it. Jewels, diamonds, sapphires, rubies. For a moment, TG stood and thought of all the things he would buy. A new TV and DVD player, loads of computer games, and his mum could have something too. Holding his breath, he slowly opened the lid. The chest was certainly full of crystals, cream and white shiny crystals, rock salt crystals. What a huge disappointment. He just stood and stared blankly into the box. From the doorway behind him, Sky's voice broke the silence. It's the captain's, stable, captain's table salt, TG. Back in the 16th century, only the very rich could afford to have a box of salt like this on the table. Well, it's not the 16th century now. I should have known it was too good to be true. And angrily, he plunged his hand into the salt, swashing it round and spilling some on the table. His fingers touched on some paper poking out of the salt. Another clue! His spirits rose at the thought of the fun to be had solving it. He forgot all about his disappointment and plucked it out. Now ye are here, ye might have a good dinner. Then we shall see if you turn out a winner. All I've got to do is eat a good dinner and I'll be a winner. The crystal lady will be saved, beamed TG. I'm glad you're feeling so confident, TG. Let's go back up on deck. I'll wait with the others while you go to the gallery and have your meal, said Skye. Panic hit TG. Aren't you coming with me? Afraid not. This one you have to do alone, answered Skye apologetically. Oh, flip, thought TG. Taking one last look back at the warriors, he had, who had sat themselves down by the, for, the foremast to eat some fresh fruit, TG turned to leave. Scarlet called after him. Remember, TG, things aren't always what they seem. Be careful. I will, TG called back. I'll be fine with Davy to look after me. Delicious cooking smells mingled with jolly accordion music wafted up towards him as he entered the galley. Davy greeted him with a wide smile. Avast there, TG, me lad. Hope you're hungry. Sit yourself down and take a look at the menu. I'm just off to trim the mainsail. Back before long, my lad. He gave TG a quick wink and disappeared from sight. TG looked down at the menu in his hand. Davy's galley. Children's menu. Oh, good, thought TG. It's a special children's menu. How kind of Davy to have thought of that. At least I can be sure that the food will be good for children. Now what shall I choose? And he continued to read. Davy's Galley, children's menu. All meals served with low-fat fries, peas and sweet corn. First of all, the, so it's a seafarer's main course. Davy's fresh fish cakes. Spanish gold chicken doubloons. Pirate grilled salmon. Sea dog hot dog. And then hearty afters. Davy's treasured toffee pud. Fruit mutiny surprise. Jolly Roger jam sponge. And 
gun deck banana. And to swill the decks down, fruity fizz, sea breeze water, Captain Dreads cola, and rocking waves milkshake.